Welcome. My name is Peter Vrabets. This is my fellow colleague Clement Verna, and we will talk today about uh, outcome-driven delivery. So what is outcome-driven delivery? It is basically the shift of the mindset for individuals, teams, and whole organizations to stop thinking about the outputs and start thinking and focusing more on the expected outcomes and uh, and the impacts. We both get you know passionate about this change with Clement a few quarters ago. We experimented, learned something, and that's what we would like to uh, share with you and uh, inspire you to do the same. A uh, friend of mine, colleague as well, asked me how we get connected with the Clement because if he looked in the Red Hat org chart, there was only a distance between us. So the story is, Clement is the manager in the Arcos team, and I saw his report full of metrics and interesting data. So I started asking about those, and I had some suggestions what could be there. And he basically responded back to me with a nice presentation about the outcome-driven delivery. And I said, OK, cool. Actually, I have a good partner on the other side, because he is trying to do the same thing as I do. So that's how it gets started, right? Yeah, and, and it's uh, yeah, it's better to be two than uh, on our own. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. So uh, we talk about the uh, outcomes, but that might imply that there is something wrong with the outputs, right? So what's the what's the problem with the output mindset? Before we get there. Just a quick thing, what is the output? Output is some artifact of your work. So in this particular example, this slide deck is artifact of our work. This presentation is the, as well, and then the recording would be output as well, okay? Uh, so one of the first thing that I will mention is communication across multiple levels. For instance, if you talk with a manager, your manager or manager of the manager, you might find the situation that you talk about the outputs of your work that you delivered. Unfortunately, on the other side, the signal is not received that way. Because if people work on a different abstraction level, they would like to hear impact of your work. I think that's what you experience like before, also like in your, uh, in your, in your lives. So, lack of signal between the, between the two levels, if you talk too much about the, about the outputs. Also, it could be the other way around, right? Your manager would tell you impact that he strives to achieve, which for you would be then hard to translate into, okay, what outputs should I generate, right? So that's one, one issue that I would like to highlight. The other is, if you become a master of the outputs, you organize them, you prioritize them, you can create very nice delivery plans that you will be like uh, proud, proud about. Delivery plans for the next year. And there are some traps with that. I'm not against the delivery plans, delivery plans are great, but the traps are that such a delivery plan actually could become your call that you would strive for and you would focus. So it would be like your inner goal to deliver that plan. The risk is that you might start losing the focus on the user and a customer because you won't be like externally orientated. You will be just inner orientated on your delivery plan. But that also means if you have these regular meetings when you review that high level delivery plan, you might be more like uh, defensive to changes, uh, not welcoming the changes of for the priorities. You would go into the meeting like, okay, we have the meeting, but most likely nothing has changed. Priorities are probably the same. So that's, I think that's the wrong mindset. You should welcome the changes, right? Because those changes mean that something externally happened or you learn something new and it's totally fine to change your delivery plan. But the delivery plan is not the final goal. The final goal is to make the users and the customers happy. 
And one last thing that I would mention here, very subjective, but at least for me, hard to celebrate success or feeling the success. You know, sometimes we do very big outcome, we focus on it, we were stressed from that, right? Example, this presentation, Peter delivering it here. Would I feel successful in the end? I'll say, yeah, I survived. <laughs> but that's not the real success. It wouldn't give me real feeling of the success. Success would be, as I said in the beginning, you know, to inspire you, so you start doing something better and differently in your life and in your career. And I will pass it to Clement. Thanks, Peter. All right, another problem with outputs, and uh, I don't know about your team, but I know my team, we are always busy. So when you focus on output, it's busy, 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 busy all the time. There is, some, there is always something to do. In this environment, you know, everyone has a long to-do list. You spend a long of time prioritizing, like, oh yeah, should we do this, and so on. It's a never-ending story. Um, so why is that a problem when you're in this environment, always busy, you don't collaborate? So everyone has their like, small focus, like, oh yeah, I need to do, deliver A, B, C, D, and you don't have the time to talk to others, what are they doing, and, and so on. So, um, and as Peter I like to say, like, is it our job to be busy? No. No. <laughs> it's not our job to be busy. Our job is to deliver value to our users in community or our customers. So we really need to be focused on value and what is valuable for, for our users. I think a, a lot of this comes from like the industrial age when, you know, we are like factory lanes and so on, like people were uh, working nonstop eight hours and the, the more goods you produced, the more value you were generating. However, for us, I think it's interesting to introduce uh, other concepts than the productivity, which is really just like how much, uh, the amount of outputs, and start to think about things like efficiency, which is really doing the, the, the thing right, which I think in our world is like what we call quality, and another uh, concept which is more effectiveness, which is doing the right, right thing at the right time. So how we spend our time to really deliver that value. And as I, as I mentioned, in software engineering, really the amount of good we produced is not really equal to, to the value provided. It's, it's often quite the opposite. Uh, a good example of this, I think like, so we, we all have like smartphones. And uh, if we look at this uh, study from 2019, um, the average user of a smartphone has like around like 40 applications installed. And they spend 89% on 18 applications. So in your smartphone, there is pro probably over half of the application that you never use, or maybe just a, a very little. So if you start to think about effectiveness, was it useful to develop those applications? Did we spend the time working on those applications? Was it really like a good investment or not? So Peter, tell us about uh, what is outcome-driven delivery. So when I started exploring this topic, I, lots of sources pointed me to this framework, which is simple, but helped to understand what we are talking about and how to and help us to like uh, explore what we do, what we should do. And the framework consists of three key elements. We already touched the outputs, provided some examples. I said it's an artifact that you create from your work. If I should use examples from uh, engineering life, it would be the it would be the delivered feature, it would be the upstream fix, it would be fix for the vulnerability, it could be the upstream release. Okay, so I think that's easy. If we then move on to the other side, impact. Impact is the long-term business. Uh, result and think of it like something that is measured in terms of the money time customer happiness and what we have between these two worlds or two extremes like an API API is the outcome an outcome is defined as a change 
in a human or a team behavior. And in an ideal situation, if everything works well, is properly set up, proper outputs drives the change in a team or a human behavior, and proper outputs outcomes uh, drives the, the impact that we can see, for example, in the financial results. And Clement, I will pass it to you because next slide is about what does it mean to have a good outcome. Yeah, so, you know, as, as we started to look at this a bit more, it's like, okay, so we understand a bit better the concept, but what, what, what is really a good outcome or what is a good enough outcome? And I think I have like this uh, very simple, like if there is one thing to, to remember, it's this very simple framework. You have like three questions. What are you trying to change? What is the behavior you're trying to change? Uh, who is the target? So whose behavior you want to change? And I think finally, maybe the, the most important is like, how are you going to measure? How are you going to, you are going to know if you are successful or not? Like, uh, what is your feedback loop pretty much? And what you're going to learn from that? All right, should we look at some uh, examples? So yeah, yep. let me From your board. yeah let me tell you about uh, about the core OS team and uh, one example. So we have a behavior it's like spend a lot of uh, man like time through like the packaging and the releasing of our software and this is taking a lot of time. So what's the behavior we want to change? We want to stop doing this manually and use like automation tool like Packet and and so on to to help us like stop this behavior. Who is the target user? It's the team. And how are we going to learn if we manage to do that or not? How are we uh, going to learn if we are successful? It's to measure how much time we are spending on this activity, for example, per sprint. What about you, Peter? Yeah. Just one example uh, from the area of the security compliance. So who is the user? Like we have uh, we have users and the uh, and the customers who need to meet some uh, security regulations, so their infrastructure needs to be configured in a certain way to meet industry regulations and the industry standards. Still, many of those write some custom scripts on their own, or they they work with our consulting engineers to write those scripts, and that's like very you know fragile. Unsustainable, hard to sustain, you know, for them, and we want to change their behavior because we have a much nicer uh, solution. Uh, we are the backend team, and we work with the front end teams uh, that provide system management solutions like Satellite and Insights. And we want to change behavior of these users to stop writing the uh, the, the scripts. Instead, use the front ends, which allow them to scan their infrastructure. And, and generate the reports uh, for, uh, for their auditors. And what we measure, we actually measure the usage of those uh, security profiles, those auditing things in those system management solutions. And we also like to keep the trend, so we, we know uh, what is the trend, and we also know uh, what are the most like interesting regulations for our customers and users, how, how they use it. Okay, and the next two slides, I would like to touch a little bit like some important aspects of the of the framework that we need to take into uh, account when we look at all those metrics and the numbers. So one of the thing is the feedback loop. If you if you do some changes on sign of the outputs, you generate different outputs. So you change your performance. Usually, if you have some uh, metrics in place, the feedback loop is quite short. You will like recognize it very quickly. However, when we go to the outcomes, the feedback loop becomes longer and uh, longer. Also, like for the impact, is like extremely long, right? Uh, we need to like acknowledge it, and we need to strive to basically like change it. But this, this is something that will always goes against us, basically. If we measure something on the impact side, it will be like always like delayed in comparing measuring something 
on the some metric on the output side. The other important thing is level of influence and level of control. On the side of the outputs, usually the outputs are in your control. You can you can really like control your performance. You can really control what you do. If we get to the outcomes, you know, change of team behaviors, you can you will see that you can influence them. It's not fully in your control because there is some external factor that can play a key role that you didn't didn't know before, or there could be some other teams. So you you need to like acknowledge that you just you don't have such a control. You just have an influence. And then if we go to the impacts, then the influence becomes even like a smaller and smaller because we don't know basically with our outputs and uh, outcomes how much we contribute to those impacts. There could be other teams that contribute and maybe their contribution is actually higher. So, so, so we need to take it into, 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 into consideration when we evaluate uh, all, these, all these metrics on all these three levels. And one other important factor here is that if we have these conversations about the outcomes and the impacts with the people, some people tend to need to have more in a control. And then it actually could become hard for them to think about outcomes and the impact because it could be uncomfortable for them because they don't, they don't have a full control, they have an influence. So we need to be, I would say, watch our language because if you talk with your people, they might think that, oh, now I talk about the outcome, about the impact, and it could become commitment you know, for me and it's something I can commit because I know that I don't have a full control. So you really need to be cautious of how you have you communicated? And really, I'm now I'm speaking with from my own like a personal like a experience. So we really need to find the language where we said when we talk about the outcome, it's our intention to influence. When we talk about the impact, it's our intention to influence it. We don't have it in our our control. And the other thing is important is that it's related to the influence. This framework is. Specifically, you know, designed in a sense that you have some outputs, but you you just need to learn, you know, if those outputs would really drive those outcomes. So you always we use the language we believe that it will drive the outcome, and we believe the outcome will drive the impact. So we treat this as a as a hypothesis, and that's important. It's a hypothesis that you aim to validate. Very often, on the side of outputs, we use the concept of MVP, minimal viable product. If we have some bigger feature or stuff, we say, this is an MVP, that's an MVP. We see there's some, like a minimum scope that must be delivered. But what we often forget is that if we deliver the MVP, the purpose of that MVP is actually to validate this hypothesis that you see on the slide. And you want to validate it as soon as possible. You want to see if that output actually like a really generates that outcome. And that's the purpose of, of MVP. Okay. Okay, how to measure? Yeah, exactly. Uh, thanks, Peter. So once you have those uh, hypotheses, you, you really want to know if, if you're right or not, or pretty much you need a way to learn. And the best way to do it is to have a metrics or to start to measure your, your outcomes. Um, it's not simple, as you mentioned, when we are not in control of things, we are a bit scared and like, we think we'll be judging perf on performance and so on. So there are a few tips to, to, to have. And this particular framework also, like if you have to remember one thing, like uh, try to, to remember this. Uh, it's a nice way to start with collecting data, collecting metrics, and, and making bets. Well, it's pretty simple. Obviously, once you start to learn about the behavior that you want to change, you need to collect a baseline. So you, you have a starting point. Once you have this, you can look at it, identify maybe some opportunities or some improvement that you would like to drive. So that's your, your behavior that you will want to change. Implement features, so outputs, start to implement, try some bets, like, oh, what, what happened if we develop this? 
And once this is available for your user, you start to see if that impacts your baseline. So did, did our user adoption go up? Did our user adoption go down? And, and so on and so on. And you repeat this. It's just pretty much hypothesis, bets you learn, and you, you just repeat and, and adapt. OK, one thing to be careful about with metrics is to really be focused on output this time. Because as Peter mentioned, we are in control of outputs. It's something we, we are comfortable with. But the more you're going to measure output and you're going to uh, associate your, me your output measurement to success, the more you're going to train your team or the people working with you to thinking about increasing those outputs and lo losing sight of the value for the user and so on. So that's something to be, to be mindful about and something to have in mind. One, you know, one, one remark you know, to the measuring the, the outputs and focusing the outputs. If we are in a situation that we don't need to validate the hypothesis anymore, if we basically know that what we do reach the level of, of impact and we just, our desire is not to grow, it's just more like uh, maintain that level of impact. And we know that what we're delivering is supporting that impact. And we're fine with that. It's okay to focus on the outputs. It's okay to measure the outputs. Because in this scenario, our strategy would be actually to optimize those outputs, right? And maybe uh, do things, the same things, in like smarter, right? So if we, again, if the hypothesis is validated and if we want to keep the level of the impact, focusing the output and thinking how we can optimize that actually makes total sense as a, as a, as a strategy for an engineering manager or the, or the product owner. Okay, how to get started? So my part. So, how to get started? Um, okay, here are some like recommendations, you know, of how we did it. Uh, some areas I would done better if I do them again. <laughs> uh, try to highlight those. So definitely don't rely on these presentations. You know, you're hearing our experiences on uh, engineering, you know, managers, but. If you if you have a good uh, agile practitioners uh, like uh, close to you willing to help, they are probably like even like a better experts to to do this and and facilitate the discussions. So I would say use those, read the books, take some trainings. Okay, and very important thing is educate others because you won't, you are not, you won't do this uh, uh, shift in the mindset on your own, and you are not going to. Uh, define those uh, outputs, outcomes, and the impacts metrics on your own. You will do it with other people, and you need to educate them. That's very important. Also, it is not going to happen in a one meeting, and it's not going to happen in a two meetings. So just allocate some space for that cross-functional team to stay focused on that for some period of time, at least a quarter. What will be the content or discussion in those meetings? You will start with who are your customers, who are your users, but also who are not your customers and your users. And you will think about like what is the value that you, you believe you, you, you want to provide them, and then what behavior indicates they recognize that value. And before you go to the next step to measure that, you really need to stay on that on that step to indicating that behavior to that you want to like record that that how you mm, sorry. Before you go to the measurement, you really need to be crystal clear about about what are the behaviors you know that are important that indicate the value. Right, that's very important because what we found out is that people start immediately saying. But we cannot measure it. We cannot measure it. Even though it made sense, we basically like a mentally, you know, uh, decline it. And that was that was wrong because you need to think really like 
out of the box than when you go to the to the measurements because later you can you can really like uh, discover that there are things that are possible which you didn't think you know before and then also i on the part of the meetings is to ask the question how we going to measure like our ourselves what will be that performance that we measure and hold ourselves accountable then what i wrote here both start using it immediately so you will see if it is useful and if what you define makes sense or not as as Clement said, maybe the first iteration was wrong, and then share your experience with uh, other teams and other people who are like uh, interested in this. All right, let me share also a few tools that you can uh, you can start to use, uh, and probably again one that you might be the the most important or like the easiest to get started. It's uh, Five Wise. Um, I'm sure you all have already outputs, so why this tool is so great is that it helps you to, to start from the output that you already have in your team and derive like the outcomes and impacts. So just basically you have whichever features you need to do and you ask yourself like, why are we doing this? Why, 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 why? Five times. And by doing this, you're going to really start to better understand exactly what you're trying to do. Um, other cool tools or things that are a bit more visual that you, you can have a look. A lot of them are just like basic questions, as, uh, as Peter said. Um, but if you, if you want other stuff, like you can look at also uh, logic models. And uh, the Fedora project is actually using those. So if you, if you want to have a look, there is a, a lot of like great examples. And you can get fancy and have like some uh, very nice graph but for your manager. <laughs> All right, so how is it uh, helping us, Peter? Yeah, so we are, I would say, the, still at the beginning of this journey. We are learning, but, and, and this is sort of subjectively of how I see it, and many people, you know me, that I'm optimistic, so you can keep me honest, you know, <laughs> after, the, after this presentation. But what I, what I, what I recognized, it helped me as a, as a manager previously, I had some attempts to say what we should do and what outputs should we uh, generate, and and it, there was no buy-in, okay, no buy-in from the team. It was like it stayed in the backlog, low priority. But when I approached them in a sense like, hey, this is the impact that we uh, want to achieve, and basically these are the behaviors that we see on our customers, and we probably would like to change those behaviors. Actually, out. Uh, Tilting the focus to the to the team to to this direction, actually, I was like successful in that. The other thing where it helped us when we have the roadmap and the feature reviews. And now I think we are we start having like the conversation for each feature and being like a critical would this feature or that feature trigger any and support change of the behavior. And we can at least, we, we don't quantify yet, basically, like a how much. That would be the next, next level, maybe presentation in the next DEF CONF. But for now, at least we are able to see if there is a link between that. And we are able, actually, we were able to identify some of the features where we realized that actually we can drop in the priority. The other thing, uh, communication with the, with the management. Uh, Example that I had here. Yeah, I see that actually like multiple people in the organization now found those like a metrics useful. And previously I wanted to say like a different example, but now something that happened just this week, you know, there was a product owner, you know, came to me very like excited and he told me like, Peter, like there was something that we work on without a team for quite some long time. And and now we actually have the metrics and we can see like the adoption. And he was like really like excited about it. I said, okay, we are sending the weekly report in a minute, but can you edit there? And he did, and he did. And management responded on that. Right, Steph? Yeah? <laughs> it's a proof. Success. But success. But hold on, the other thing, the fourth point here. Development of the people. Was I happy about the numbers that I saw there or something? I said, okay, this is a new thing. Yeah, of course, it grows. We are at the beginning anyway. But what really made me happy, now speaking as a people manager, that I saw that change 
in the mindset of the person. Because he talked to that other team. He asked about that. He get it. So that was that was happy. That's what I see. That as we like adopting this change, I see like the engineering managers, product owners, even the pro basically the whole product team evolve and and grows and getting more more matured. So that what made me happy, and that's where I saw the you know success already. I think. So do you mean you have a change of behavior in your engineering department? That's I think that's a good outcome. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's a good, but uh, still not still not a measure. I realized. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to to uh, go further, as Peter mentioned, like you know, we we just starting with this. There is a, a lot of like people that. I've already talked about a lot of those things, so uh, there are a few books to, to go and have a look, some blog posts and, and so on. But, or come and have a chat with us also. So let's measure if, uh, if we were successful or not, and uh, let's see how many questions we have. Okay, so the question was during planning, so in that case, quarterly planning, uh, it's very focused on the output. How can we start to uh, write, like make outcome more visible during the planning and write them down, like uh, in Jira or other tools? Um, you want to? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I have answer. <laughs> Oh, I have three minutes. Okay, okay. So the thing is, how to how to work with the uh, connection and uh, the, uh, uh, when you do the quarterly planning on the engineering side. So, like uh, previously, you know, we work with the outcomes on the on the high level planning, which is before the quarterly planning. But what I envision what we can do on the quarterly planning, because you already see how the features are like the prioritized. So first of all, you can challenge it. You can challenge it with your product owner. Why is it prioritized? Does it like really support? So that's the that's the one action. And the other action that we want to uh, want to do that uh, it's a new idea. Um, it's a manager goal proposed for the next quarter. I hope it will fly. But we actually want to document in each feature. Uh, what behavior we basically intend to change, so it should be like explicitly written in the in the in the in the feature. Okay, Steph. Um, so on uh, earlier, you mentioned three key categories: like type, like medium, and yeah. Are the same people focused on all three of those, or are different people focused on each of those? What do you think? I think. Uh, yeah, repeat the question. If all the people, if the same people are actually focused on those uh, feedback, loops, feedback loops as I, you know, presented them. In my opinion, there should be like a, a different people collecting those, uh, uh, the metrics and providing those metrics. So, for example, if I talk uh, about the impact metrics, I expect like more of like a high rank, high level managers and the product managers should focus on those. And, and and collect them and ensure we have them. Okay, so different people should be focused on 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 getting those data and interpreting those data. In terms of using those data for the feedback loops, I think engineering manager, even like definitely line manager, need to actually look at all those three feedback loops at the same time and see how things are basically like. Connected, okay, because you you can never like evaluate just single metric on one level on its own. You need to look at it at the wider context. So, in terms of using those feedback loops and looking at the looking at those data, definitely one person or one function at one level should see them all. However, in in getting those information, I expect different people like you know in, in, interested you know in in that or co collecting that. And, and I think like like one important thing is 
uh, even for engineers, it's important to be connected to the bigger impact one because we, we mentioned the lack of celebration and so on. And I think there is nothing more like, um, like um, you know, when you're passionate about your work and you're able to connect it to actual result of the whole company and say, yeah, I help to drive the business further or I help to drive adoption and so on. It's really a, a great uh, drive or a motivation. So yeah, I think it's useful to to show like the, the three feedback loop to to everyone. And I think we're out of time. So come in and chat to us after. Thank you. Thank you.